This video is the second part of the series of videos related to Shor's algorithm. Please make sure you've watched the previous video first before continuing with this one. Up until now, you might have been wondering where the quantum aspect is going to come in. In fact, we will soon show you how the last problem we introduced in the last video is overcome using quantum mechanics. We finished the last video knowing the math and the tools to find the prime factors of n, but we encountered a problem which is that in order to turn our initial random guess g into a good guess, we need to know how many times to multiply our guess by itself until we get a multiple of n plus 1. This is not an easy task to do on a classical computer. In this video, we will show you how periodicity in quantum mechanics can help us solve this problem. The crux of what we want to do is to use the concept of superposition of all possible answers at once, arranged such that all the wrong answers destructively interfere with each other. In fact, they are arranged such that there is a periodicity to the right answers. This is why people call Shor's algorithm Shor's period finding algorithm, which leads us to find the prime numbers. We'll explain by what we mean by all of this shortly. From the last video, we remember we came to this formula, g to the p equals m times n plus 1, where g is our initial guess and n is the number we want to factor. We rewrote the equation and we ended up on the following g to the p over 2 plus 1 times g to the p over 2 minus 1 equals m times n. Here, what we agreed on is that given a guess g, we can raise it to a power p, such that g to the p over 2 plus minus 1 will share factors with n. Our goal is to try to find this p, but if we do trial and error, as a classical computer would, it would take too long. Therefore, we want to make use of superposition of states in the quantum frame. We thus define a quantum mechanical operation that takes an input x and raises any guess g to that power of x. It is then followed by an operation that takes the result and calculates how much bigger than a multiple of n it is. We will call this term the remainder r. In our quantum computer, we send a superposition of numbers, and this will apply the operations described previously. Thus, we end up getting a superposition of the different numbers, possible p's, and their remainders, how much each of those powers are more than a multiple of n. As we've said before, we want a destructive interaction of the possible answers such that we only end up with one possible correct answer p. To continue, we need to use this following mathematical property. g to the x equals m times n plus r, and g to the x plus p equals to s times n plus r. We won't dwell on this too much, but we encourage you to look into it if you so desire. For now, we'll take it as a fact and continue. What this means is that the power p we're trying to find has a special repeating property, in which if we take another power and add or subtract p to it, the remainder stays the same. The advantage of quantum computing is in the fact that the simultaneous operation on a superposition of different possible powers allows us to see this relationship between different powers. Let's recap. Now we have a superposition of possible powers with their respective remainders. The next step is to measure the superposition to get a random remainder, such that we're left with a superposition of all possible powers with the same remainder. We need to remember something important about quantum computing. If we input a superposition and we get an answer that could have come from more than one element of the superposition, we will have a superposition of those elements. This is an important characteristic that we will use to our advantage. Looking back at the mathematical property we presented, we realize something very important. Those powers are all numbers that are p apart from each other. Therefore, p is the period we see in the superposition of our output. The best way to figure out this periodicity is by looking at the quantum Fourier transform. There is a separate video available which explains Q of t, as this is an important step in understanding how Shor's algorithm and many other algorithms work. In broad strokes, Q of t is able to provide an output in which all wrong solutions destructively interfere, leaving only the correct solution visible as a readout. Combining this with what we learned from the first video, we can put everything together. Once we have this periodicity p, and if p is even, we can get two numbers, g to the p over 2 plus minus 1. And if neither of them is a multiple of n, we now have numbers that share factors with n. We're not quite at the end. If you remember, we now have to use Euclid's algorithm to find the actual factors we're searching for. And now, we can finally get what we're looking for and decrypt the data. As a concluding remark, we will highlight that with Short's algorithm, we will find p, and thus break the encryption, 
almost immediately with one single quantum computation. This is leaps and bounds better than what classical computers can do for us. A classical computer would have to assess each possible power one by one to find the correct one. Considering how big the numbers n we use, the amount of time that would take would be unreasonably long. The quantum advantage is significantly bigger, such that soon we will be able to decrypt almost any data encrypted using large number factoring schemes such as RSA. And that is what our whole internet is built on. But don't worry about your data. Thankfully, there is a whole equally large field of quantum encryption which will come to save the day and our data.